Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Sony Online Entertainment booth for Planet Side 2, the free-to-play, massively multiplayer online first-person shooter. And also welcome to everyone who's tuned in on the Twitch TV live stream. My name is Total Biscuit. I had some very cruel parents. I'm sorry for that. And I'm joined by the wonderful Maggie Crone. Welcome to the show. Hey, hi. Thanks for joining us. Should be a lot of fun. We're going to be showcasing an awful lot of Planet Side 2 for you today. You've heard about how massive this game actually is. You haven't really had the chance to see that in person. And what we have here at our booth at E3 is 12 stations where you can actually come up and play if you happen to be at the event, as well as quite a few more, let's just say, behind-the-scenes troopers that we'll be Definitely. adding to the fight. Yeah, we actually have our Clegger back there, and he's going to be interviewing some people after, so you guys will get to hear some of that also. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. We'll be able to switch through 12 different stations to show you the action from all three perspectives. Planet Side 2 is a three-faction game. Two's a little bit boring. I like to throw a wild card in there. We've got the new conglomerate in the blue and yellow. So, prime targets for those of you who happen to be playing Terran Republic in the red and black. As well as last, but by no means least, the Vanu Sovereignty in the kind of purple and teal. Yeah, represent right here. <laughs> Doing it properly, we'll have Clegg on a little bit later on, who has also brought along his wonderful, wonderful NC colors. So, nice target painted on his head as far as I'm concerned. I think we can both agree with that. We can, yeah. <laughs> there's there's going to be a good dynamic here. We can both unite and bond over our hatred of the new conglomerate. Definitely. So, hopefully a lot of those guys die. Indeed. Planet Side's always been about factional rivalries. And anyone that played the original Planet Side, which came out in 2003, which was the first massively multiplayer online first-person shooter, brought to you by Sony Online Entertainment, can, I think, relate to the whole faction rivalry thing. It was a huge deal. People really got behind the factions they were playing. They all had different weapons, different vehicles available, different colors and different ideologies. Yep. And also, we're um, changing it up, too, so every faction feels different. Yeah. You get that different feeling for every faction. Yeah, you really do, actually. There's a large number of different weapons this time around at the disposal of the various different factions. In the original game, there weren't so many. You had a heavy assault weapon, you had a medium assault weapon, which was faction-specific, but an awful lot of other things were available as part of the so-called common pool of weapons. We'll be seeing a lot of different weapon models and vehicles today. I think it's about time we switch and show some people some gameplay. We're going to show you from the perspective of the Vanu Sovereignty. We're going to go and have a look at the Mag Rider tank one of our attendees is currently driving. Now the Mag Rider tank, rather futuristic, one of the most futuristic vehicles currently I'm available. Really shooting a friendly. Yeah, the, 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 problem, the friend of fur recognition system for the Mag Rider tank, just a little bit broken at the moment. So we have a little bit of purple on purple action, which I'm totally fine with as a Terran Republic loyalist. Now these are the Manu Sovereignty's tanks. They have a hover capability, it makes them rather maneuverable. They're still a rather large target but they can actually float over water and yep. they can get over some pretty difficult terrain. They also have the ability to strafe, which is something the other two tanks can't do. And this guy apparently really wants to kill his friends. You know, I'm alright with that. It's, uh, we do have several Terran Republic infiltrators in the Vanu Sovereignty at the moment who are capable of doing this. Kind of sleeper agents that we like to spring upon people. He's going the scenic route to get to the base, apparently, also. Nothing wrong with going the scenic route in Planet Side. It's a very, very good-looking game, and surprisingly to many of you, I would imagine, is actually going to be free-to-play. Yes, Planet Side is free-to-play. It's a free-to-play MMO FPS. So we're going to see a little bit of air action as our Vanu Sovereignty Heavy Assault Trooper decides to get out of position. You can see either, I think at this distance, it looks like it might be a galaxy, actually. I think it's a Liberator. Yeah, they do look quite similar, but at a distance, it's a little bit difficult to tell. The Galaxy is a massive dropship. You can fit an entire squad. The crazy thing about the Galaxy is you can fit the, a number of people that would be on a traditional FPS team inside a single vehicle. <laughs> that's true. And also, if you get a kill on one of those things, that's a huge kill spam for you. Ching, ching, yeah, if you like your experience. Much. The other thing you do with Mag Riders is drive them over your friendly troopers. It's actually quite convenient. Well, you would be surprised. We close in on victory. Yeah, and as he was talking about the Galaxy and the Liberator, those are both our support vehicles, and they're basically all of the factions get those. It's not just one faction. Yeah, at the moment though, we do see a faction-specific air battle going on. I believe that was a mosquito flying you over just in that direction. To the top turret, so we have that also, so you can switch guns. If no one's in that other seat, you can switch to it. And he's using the AV weapon for AA. I'm sorry. Uh, 
Yeah, it's never a particularly good idea to try and shoot down aircraft with tank shells, but you'd be surprised how many times we've seen that successfully happen. But we're in the cockpit of a new conglomerate Reva, oh the yeah. faction specific aircraft. You see, I've never been a big fan of the Reva. Also, a big boxy aircraft being actually used to shoot down a Terran Republic aircraft oh really? there. Looks like he's actually being pursued as well. I always liked the Reva. Yeah, the Reva was always the bane of my life. It was the bane of my existence. Incredibly difficult to deal with. It was a very useful ground attack I just aircraft. Liked, uh Smothering the ground with rockets. That's exactly what it was good at. Without question. Large incoming to capture point B. Defend at all costs. I'm going to switch over to a different view now. Ooh, this is a max. Ah, yeah. So what we've got here is a max unit. This is a large armored exosuit. The largest currently available in the game. You'll be able to walk around this as an actual class. And as you can see, he can't hack the terminal, that's why he didn't change it, so it's still owned by the TR at the moment. Yeah, it's not a especially good idea to run in front of a max unit like that. Things no. tend to get a little bit messy. Max units are very tough to take down, but they do lack maneuverability. They're very, very large targets. And they can't hack terminals. Yes, they can't or do that either. At the moment, our players are actually fighting over the Zervan Amp Station, which is going to be the centerpiece for this particular demo. And in this case, you have to actually hack various terminals in order to take control of the facility, which gives you the ability to spawn within it. Very useful tactical. I think he's looking for some people to kill. Certainly a consideration. Now, the aim of the game itself is to actually take over as much territory as possible. So, in this case, this is just a single facility. There are entire continents worth of these. Oh, get owned by... Well, I'd say unfortunately our NC Max unit has been taken down there, but there you go. Now, this game does not have your traditional kill cam. It was felt by a lot of ex-players, as well as current players of various FPS, that the kill cam gives away too much. It yeah. gives away the position. It's a little bit... a little bit cheesy, a lot of people were saying. Well, we had originally tried out a kill cam. I mean... As designers, we are definitely open to listening to the public, and I think that's a big thing for us. So, um, you know, they were expressing their hate for it. So we kind of tried to go for a more still version and still let you, you know, see what you got killed by, and actually supplying you with a lot more data than previously. That is very, very true. Now, currently driving around in a lightning tank. This is a small one-person vehicle. Very fast, very maneuverable, got quite a lot of firepower, but it was known in the first game as the paper tank. And there was a reason for that. That's essentially what its, its armor is made from. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot more maneuverable, uh, but it's also a little squishier than, you know, your normal very much so. metal tanks. Yeah, this, this is a game about combined arms, it's a game about teamwork, so... Obviously the lightning does have a role, but the larger main battle tanks can take far more people. You can actually get two people in a main battle tank. And there are even larger ground vehicles. The Sunderer, for instance, can actually fit an entire squad. Yep, the Sunderer is also one of our support vehicles. So we have the Sunderer, the Galaxy, the Liberator, and all of them supply different things in the battlefield. You can see the Lightning currently zipping around trying to find some targets. You can also see his customization, too. He's got the Z version. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's something that's worth talking about, really. The free-to-play model of Planet Side 2 is based around the idea that you can look the way that you want to. Yeah. You can buy a lot of different customizations, whether it be for your soldier or whether it be for individual vehicles. Seems like he's managed to run over a Vanu Max that had a nice desert camo on there, and he's driving around with a Zebra camo. Not all that useful for hiding yourself, I have well, to say. Well, the desert camo wouldn't be too bad with the desert. Yeah, camo. it'll be okay. But the idea of Planet Side, in terms of its core aspect, is that they discovered technology which allows for the storage of DNA and the infinite respawn of troops. So then our troops aren't really all that concerned about hiding. 
Lightning Tank just continuing to uh, move around here, They're trying to find himself some targets. I'm going to switch over to a Terran Republic view. Leave the restricted area immediately. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a Mosquito in flight in third person. You, you get a bit of a more sense of scale here as to what's actually going on. This is actually a relatively small air battle in comparison to what the game's going to be able to bring. But it's still much larger than most traditional FPS. Even in a 64-player setup with various popular FPS games, you maybe see one or two aircraft in the sky. In this case, you can see about eight or nine. And we are talking hundreds here in terms of how many will actually be able to come on display. Well, the battlefield allows for thousands, so unlike any other 64 by 64 map, you're actually going against thousands of people on a map. So it's one of the cool things about our game. And also it's persistent, so as you can see there's no match ending, so you're actually playing the game full on all the time. It never ends, unless you decide to stop. <laughs> yeah, and when, the thing is when you log back in, you can also get right back into the fight that you were involved in several hours ago. And of course it's going to change, yeah. <laughs> it's fairly rare to find a game that actually provides that. That's why the MMO model is it's something I suppose that a lot of developers have been chasing for a while in terms of FPS, but the technology just hasn't been there yet. Now as you can see, you finally have the capability to do that. You can really get that. a good view of the whole base too, oh, yeah. flying around it. Yeah, the base is very, very large. In each individual base is the size of a traditional FPS map, but there are many outposts and towers throughout the continent that provide smaller combat experiences, focusing more on infantry warfare, and even the lay of the land is going to be fairly important in how you approach. Yeah, definitely. So there are going to be some areas where you want to maybe pull out all tanks, or maybe only pay, take aircraft in there. So it all depends on what's going on in the battlefield at the moment and where you're at. And yeah, using the terrain to your advantage is always good. I mean, earlier we saw someone basically sniping and shooting on top of the towers, and like that is one of the best ways to see the whole battlefield. Yeah, the view distance is fairly impressive to say the least. You've got a lot of different angles that you can approach any kind of engagement. It's not just a case of driving in the front door. More often than not, you'll see a wide variety of ways to actually attack a base. Yeah, so strategy is going to play a big role in this game also. I mean, if anyone has played the, planets, the original planet side, it, they would understand that as well, so... Yep, Sally Dango's the Mosquito. You have to expect to die in this game. You've got hundreds upon hundreds of players on every team. So, you're going to be a target for somebody. So, rolling in groups is always good. Yeah, I mean, th this is what the game is kind of designed around. The idea of outfit play. And outfit is more of your traditional guild. What you as you can see, he's actually... Uh, purchasing a vehicle right there and you saw like those numbers underneath that is the resource management so you kind of get more resources the more you capture bases and whatnot and that's what you're actually spending uh, your resources on so you gotta kill people to get some vehicles but you can also gun someone else's if you're not yeah that if you run out of resources it's not the end of the world there are you can take up a transport position in various other vehicles galaxies can hold entire squads Sunderers can hold entire squads so it's not really a case of everyone needing their own individual vehicle More often than not it's not it's not the best idea, because at the end of the day, if you have a large convoy, you're very, very vulnerable to, say, an airstrike, for instance, that would come over large liberated gunships, reavers, mosquito sites, actually coming down and strafing the convoy in the way that you've got to think about logistics in the same way that you would in an actual war, rather than your more traditional FPS model of, oh, there's a vehicle there, I'm just going to jump in it, that's the best way to deal with it. Yeah, what do you see this guy doing while he's, like, jumping in the air like that? He's a light assault, so he actually has jump jets. Yeah. That was something that was a feature of Planet Side 1 on the Max for the Vanu Sovereignty. That's now an entire class here. The Light Assault will be able to jump over walls. That's just another way of actually attacking a facility or a tower or outpost in this game. I think he's going to find some enemies. He's actually using a thermal scope right there. Interesting choice. I mean, Night Warfare is not something we'll be able to show you just yet, but hopefully we'll get a chance to do that during this demonstration. Night Warfare is a big deal. Nights yes. get really dark. You're going to see a lot of tracer fire, you're going to see the use of headlights and searchlights, and of course thermal imaging. In this case, thermal imaging, not so useful. Yep, it's a full day and night schedule, so you'll be able to see both. And night combat's really nice, and seeing all the tracers is so pretty. <laughs> it very much is, yeah, actually. The, the build that you're seeing now has had some fairly significant improvements in terms of lighting that we will hopefully be able to demonstrate for you. Oh, he's buying off a little bit more than they could chew there, I feel. 
getting some good shots from this turn. Yeah, yeah things are about to get very unpleasant Ooh, for him, I feel. Oh, very good. nice, very nice. Very good. Well done. Well, there's oh, the strength of the Terran Republic in action. Pack, okay. Oops, there's a grenade. Oh, I need to... That's not what you want to run into. That's not a very good idea. You can take a few hits in this. At the end of the day, you are in a fairly heavy piece of futuristic battle armor, but that also means the weapons are more powerful too, so that's something to consider. If grenades aren't on every class, um, you kind of have to, well I mean, they're not, you have to buy them with resources, yeah. so that's another thing too, so you probably want to spend those wisely. Here we're actually giving them to people for free, so they can just toss them everywhere, but when you have those, you're actually going to want to use them really wisely. Yeah. You did see some max units going up to the uh, vehicle, so that is, no! No, that, <laughs> that's not a good place to I go. Like, no, no, no. The resources are actually hidden inside the cliffs. They're trying desperately to mine them. I know we were saying we were saying earlier how we, we would like to see the kill death ratio for the <laughs> for the mountains. Bad. Let's go with bad. Someone's getting shot at. Once again, a different set of sights on this particular weapon here. You can essentially unlock a large number of different sites and pick the ones that are more suitable to your playstyle. In this case, he's using a kind of a futuristic ACOG style. Gets a little bit of zoom in, but seems like his weapon is not quite up to par against the mighty mud kips. He was also not aiming very well. <laughs> not especially. I tend to find it helps if you aim at the opponent rather than above them. As you can see, these are some of our vehicles, and he's trying to figure out uh, to go through all our UI. Yeah, it's a good time to have a look at that, actually. Picking vehicles is fairly simple. You end up going to a terminal to spawn them, but you can check them out at any time and actually customize your loadouts. Yeah, and as you can see, he has a loadout customization there, uh, certification. So also you can customize your class with certifications, and that's how you get new weapons, and you can um, upgrade them and change them to however you want. Nice little view that we just caught there of the battle map, which is very much hex-based. You can capture different hexes, which give you... It, it's all, it gives the impression of the front line, I suppose. It, you, when you see the hexes, it's obvious where the fighting is going on. You want to continue to push your territory ownership forward, and that's the way you're going to be able yeah, to do and, it. Yeah, and it doesn't stop you from taking a base that's further in the back, but um, we do make the time longer and stuff like that. So it's more difficult. It's beneficial for you to actually go to the front line and, and uh, fight there. And, and that's where the large battles will, of course, be found. But if you're tactical and you're really skilled, you can probably pull off some crazy stuff. Oh, without question. Mag Rider rolling once again here for the uh, Vanu Sovereignty. Big tank. Rather unwieldy tank. Unfortunately, he doesn't actually have a gunner here for anti-aircraft, which could be a bit problematic for him. There are a few aircraft up in the air. I think he's just looking for somebody to Well, that was one of the aircraft. <laughs> At least a piece of it. Oh, is Pike driving that? It could be. It the could galaxy be. there is falling. <laughs> ah, they've actually managed to locate a Prowler up on the hill by the looks of it. Oh, nice. That's unfortunate for the Prowler. And the Prowler's in its secondary gun, so he wasn't even the main gun. Yeah, that was that's not a good idea. He was looking to hopefully get some hits off there. But in this case, the original planet side, being a fairly old game, did not actually have access to locational damage for tanks. In this case, obviously hitting the rear armor of a tank is preferable to hitting the front. We have the same thing with infantry too, so you actually can get headshots. In the original client side, you didn't have that. Yeah, that, that was not available at, at the end of the day. The, the technology just kind of wasn't at that stage. But it is now, as you can see. It's very gratifying too when you see that headshot. Yeah, you know what else is gratifying? Running over a max unit. I know, you should have run him over. That works too. I hop over to a uh, quick interview with one of the people who's just got the chance to actually play the game. So you can hear firsthand rather than just hearing us hype the game up. So we're just going to hop over right now to Mr. Adam Clegg. Take it away. Hi, how's it going? How you doing? I'm here with Chad. How you doing, Chad? Doing well. Good. Uh, we did, he just uh, started playing Plant Side 2 a few minutes ago. And uh, what did you think about the game? Uh, so far, I'm, I'm most impressed by the massive scale. You like the scale? Yeah, there hasn't been a game like this that has been this big, so I, that's one. That's a good thing that you're impressed with. Um, what is your favorite thing about Our games like these? Uh, first-person shooters? Yeah, you told me you're a big fanboy about first-person shooters, this type of game. What do you like most about playing these types of games? Um, I would say probably kind of the teamwork involved, especially like uh, for most first-person shooters, you don't really get like the, the large 
scale planning, it's more like team based. Yeah. So I saw you were playing New Conglomerate, which is my favorite faction. That's the best faction, so don't worry, you're doing a good job. Uh, cool. So thanks for talking with us and uh, look forward to seeing you on the battlefield. Great, thank you. Thank you very much, Clegg, and welcome back to the stream. We'll be doing this for quite some time. I actually just want to switch back in the game because someone's about to have a really bad day over here. Oh, yeah. He's not even locking on. He's, oh, there he's locked on now. But I don't think in that position you really have right to lock on. <laughs> at present, the, in the current build of the game, all three factions do have a, a rocket launcher with a rudimentary lock-on mechanism, but... Can you tell us a little bit more about the kind of diversity that we're going to be seeing in weapons as the build continues to grow and actually get advanced to the beta stage? Yeah, so for every class, we're going to have multiple weapons. So you're not just going to have one rocket launcher, right? There's going to be a variety. And on top of that, you can customize them. So you can change the optics, you can change the utilities on them, and then you can certify them for other um, things that you can trade off. So actually, we're going through that right now. So there are a lot of uh, customizations. These are just some that we're showing today. But as you level up, you'll get some more. Absolutely. That is a Spectre Sniper Rifle. Yep. Infiltrators are pretty awesome. They also get special abilities. Well, every class gets a special ability, too. So all the special abilities are pretty awesome. The Infiltrator is the cloak. Uh, the Light Assault has the jump packs that you've seen. The Combat Medic can AE heal. Uh, the engineer can dro drop deployable turrets and um, shields and stuff. And the heavy assault has a shield that he can put up. And then the max charges, currently those are the ones that we have in game. Um, we're going to supply more of those. And you're going to also have uh, cert trees for those. So we're just going to continue to grow everything and have more options for players to choose from. And kind of, you know, even though they're a common medic, maybe they want to be more assaulty. So they want to, yeah. you know, just fight to be able to heal if needed. Yeah. And so you can kind of customize that and still change yourself up to be whatever you want to play. So we're kind of trying to allow that still. Yeah, certifications essentially allow you to go down whatever path you feel most comfortable with. And a good example that was made, actually, that you see that there's an infiltrator for the Terran Republic. And he's not using that as a sniper at all. He's actually using it more as a kind of assassination spec. He's cloaking. This is not a perfect cloak, by the way. You can see this. It just requires you to be a little bit more observant. And we'll have a variety of cloaks available to people too. Like we'll have ones where if you're moving really a lot, it's going to show you really quickly. And we'll have, so it's more of a, you know, stand still, no one can see you, that kind of thing. Um, so we'll, we'll give you guys options for that too, and that's all through certification and, you know, customizing your character. Yeah, it really depends how it is that you want to play. And you'll be able to advance that at a, a fairly kind of granular rate. You can put in a cert point into pretty much anything. There is no limit to the number of cert points you can eventually acquire. And I'd also like to note that it's we're just giving you more variety and more options. We're not giving you actual uh, power. So you're never going to feel like, oh, I have 100% more power than the new that just you know, made a new character. So you'll always be balanced as far as that goes. Welcome to nighttime, ladies and gentlemen. Let's have a look at some lighting effects. We're going to be seeing quite a few of those. Nighttime in this game is certainly very meaningful. It's going to affect the way that you actually approach attacking various type. bases. That would, if he can actually hit it, I'll be he impressed. Got one hit. Oh. oh, very, very nice. nice. Terran Republic marksmanship at its finest, as always. We only need about 20, 30 bullets to do what the NC can do in five. It's true. The TR are very fast firing. That's their big thing. Yeah, you'll even notice that inside the lighting does take effect. You know, it is nighttime. It even looks like it's nighttime indoors. There's a, a nice neon glow to a lot of the different facilities. The indoors of each facility are radically different. Indeed, I think the bio lab's probably the best example. This is an amp station, one of the various facility types available in the game. The bio lab is actually a giant geodome. Oh, it's so, it's really awesome. It's like. When you just see that thing in the background, it's just beautiful. And then on top of that, when you get inside, it's very tropical because it's where the, you know, they're basically making Yeah, it's, it's an indoor like forest. It's yeah. like what a, a future butterfly garden, I suppose. <laughs> filled with nothing but violence like and glorious jungle, destruction. But it's really awesome. We're going to be heading outside here. Looks like he's going to be taking one of these energy elevators. Do you have a name for those yet? I don't know if we've named them quite yet. We're definitely going to have to have one for them. Looks like someone's going airborne now. This is what I wanted to see. Yeah, one of them takes you up and one takes you down, so... Check out that. Now that's something that most people so haven't seen before. Pretty. This is a br this is a brand new HDR lighting engine that's just been put in. Yeah, we're still working on a lot of this and, um, you know, we're going to continue to do that as well as, you know, making it fluid. 
so you don't have any lag and all that. Oh yeah, obviously. Yeah, this is still in alpha stage at the moment. Ooh. Not that you could really tell. He's going to get a good shot on him. I love that. I don't think I'm going to get anything done once I start flying around at night. I'm just going to fly forever. I don't see why not. <laughs> I'll find a friendly cliff oh, like that guy. Oh, he got stuck. Definitely have to watch out if you're going underneath passes like that so that you don't... It's useful for dogfighting, certainly, although it, it can get a little bit risky, especially with the larger aircraft. Well, I think a lot of these guys are just playing it for the first time, so, you know, they don't have a spatial recognition of how big their vehicles are yet. But yeah, without once question. you get that down... Totally, you can pull off some crazy stuff like that. We'll switch to the view of a new conglomerate lightning driver. Each of the cockpits has actually been customized, so color-wise you do have faction-specific identification. I think that's something you will learn very rapidly when you start playing this game, to recognize not only by faction color but also by silhouette as to what each vehicle is. The faction specific tanks particularly, you can very easily tell. Most of them you can tell, so the VS are more sculpted, the NC have that very boxy look, and then the TR are more slim, you know, smooth. So you, you can definitely pick up on that, I mean that's something that you grow as you play. Yeah, and you'll, you'll do so very, very quickly. Uh, the biggest tank is the Terran Republic tank. Also happens to be the best tank, I might add. Although that is open to discussion. Our brave little lightning, our paper tank he is, is going to make his way into the dangerous land of the key bindings menu. Uh oh. That's going to mess up. We have little pads there for everyone so that they know the key bindings. So like, please don't break it. <laughs> so I'm sure if someone messes that up, people are going to hit buttons and be like, what's going on? Facilities have a tendency to look rather awesome at night. They're very much lit up. Not a lot of bland in this game, I've noticed. It is actually very colourful, regardless of what time of day it is. Yeah, I think that's something that we miss in a lot of games, especially uh, FPS games, is colour. You see a lot of grey and brown, and we bring a lot of that colour out, so it's really nice. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's an eternal perpetual war, and I have a feeling the soldiers have got a little bit tired of drab browns and greys, so... It's all about faction loyalty, maintaining morale, so... Bright colours which actually has historical significance if you think about it. That was the way that people used to fight. I think the big thing too is that we're a massively multiplayer online game. So, you know, we're an MMO, we have a breathing world. It's a world that you can actually live in. It's not, you know, just a match that you're playing in. So I think that's a big thing for Planet Side 2. Um, and I hope that you guys all enjoy it. It's certainly looking an awful lot of fun. We'd like to remind people that you're not going to have to actually pay for this. Yeah, it's free to play. We need to stress that. Definitely. It's a free to play game. So. Not many free to play games look like this. In alpha, I might add. It's going to look even better once this thing comes out. That's the plan. Indeed. Unless something goes horribly, horribly wrong. I just love it. Look at all the explosions. Yeah, and this is only with a few aircraft in the sky. You can see literally hundreds of aircraft, possibly even thousands of aircraft. And more often than not, it's when outfits and large groups of players decide to organize this kind of stuff when the game really comes into its own. You're going to be seeing large air forces, entire armadas of aircraft attacking a single facility in an organized fashion. Yeah, organized outfits are going to be really cool to see. I mean, just imagine a huge column of tanks, a huge column of aircrafts, and then on top of that some galaxies filled with guys that are just dropping on a base. Like. Just even that vision is pretty amazing. We had that in the original Planet Side, but we're also going to have that in Planet Side 2 on a huge scale. So remember, this is thousands of players on a single map. Uh, switch over right here to have a look at a Terran Republic Max. Of course, you got to get all your TR. It's it's got to be done. It's got to be done. He's scoping for himself. That's what's going on. Uh, I'm, I'm fairly sure <laughs> that was somewhere in my contract. I, we get to show 80% TR footage, right? That's good. <laughs> Unfortunately, he's going to take a little bit of a rest around the corner at the moment. And as you can see right here, the TR are own the facility on the left-hand side there, and they're actually in the lead. Well, that's how I like to see it. That's certainly how I like to see it. If you own the facility, you have a fairly significant advantage. You have access to wall-mounted turrets, which can be used to gun down both aircraft and incoming vehicles and infantry. You also have access to spawning tubes, yep. which will allow you to spawn directly inside the facility. So it has this attack, defense, siege kind of scenario going on with it. Yeah, you have a forward barracks that you can spawn at, and that's a huge advantage because that allows you to get to the battle quicker. And also note that this is only just one style of capture points. We're going to have a variety of those, so 
you're not always playing the same style of game. This is just a ticket style that we're showing you right now, and we'll have more than just that in the future. Switch over and see if we can find ourselves a battle somewhere. Uh, I that love the projectiles for the uh, rocket. That crate was looking at him funny. Oh no, there was a guy. He ran away. He was like, Max. Was he disguised as a crate? No, he's right there. See him behind the... He ran back there. All NC look alike to me. There he is. Oh, and he died. Well, that's unfortunate. Well played. Nicely done by the Vardu. A lot give of the one. Maxes, since they move so slow, it's really good there for you to kind of kite yeah, them around. They're a pretty big target. If you're really good at kiting them, you they'll have a lot of trouble trying to kill you. That is very true. Just sniped the air. Yeah, why not? Ooh, look at all the... <laughs> yeah, the nice views and contrails pretty. right there. That's, That's another thing, like our game is just... You just stand there and look at it, it's so pretty. It is, it's It's not a bad looking game, all things considered, is it? In fact, it's actually a stellar looking game. If you wonder what that was, that was actually a drop pod coming down. Squad spawn is available in this game. That's not something that was in Planet Side 1. Planet Side 1 had a, an interesting way of doing things where you actually got into what was called the heart shuttle and you would all drop down onto a continent. The problem is you had to wait a long time for that. It was like you waiting. you had to go to your sanctuary to do that. Yeah, you did. Yeah, It was like waiting for a bus. It wasn't all that interesting. <laughs> yeah, you had to wait there for three minutes and then you got in it and then you found your location that you wanted to drop at and you dropped at it. In this uh, squad pod spawning, kind of similar in the sense that you are still in a drop pod, but you're dropping down and people can see that you're coming down. Yeah, it's dangerous, potentially. You are, you are a large flaming orange metal ball coming down through the sky, especially at night time. You're a bit of a target. You might want to watch out for that. Can be just a little bit risky. By the looks of it, I believe he's actually driving a Sunderer at the moment. He has probably four players in it. If you look to the right-hand side of the screen, you can see how many empty spots the Sunderer actually has. It's rather large. Yeah, so you can get a little over a squad. You pile them all up in there, head off to your location. Exactly. This, way to go. this is the kind of vehicle you want to drive right into a vehicle bay of an enemy base and it's just disgorge its contents. Yeah, it can take the hits, it gets in there, and then an entire squad of soldiers jumps out of it and unleashes hell. Yeah, and if you have some good gunners, they can uh, put out some. They can, yeah. Also. They're, they're a pretty not big target. They don't move so fast, but they're not too shabby. Looks like everyone's actually bailed out on him right there. <laughs> Be able to switch over to a different view. I don't think that's going to go so well for him, honestly. I mean, and as you can see, like, this is different effort. UI than the other. We're going to have multiple UI options. So if you want a more centered UI, that's what uh, this person's actually playing with right now. Yeah. And then we also have the, the normal, you know, MMO yeah, UI the, that you're used to. Yeah, the ability to customize opacity and scale and things like that. Yeah. This just centralizes stuff, which is nice. Yeah. You do want to watch out for getting caught out in the open. But at large scale FPS, if you don't have a vehicle, you're going to be hoofing it for quite a while. Yes. And this is no exception, to say the least. Now, we're going to be cutting to player interviews kind of throughout this demonstration just to give you the impression of people that have actually played it live on the floor. So, I'm going to kick it on over to Adam Clegg, who's going to be talking to someone that's just got finished playing Planet Side 2 here at E3. Hello, um, I'm here with Steve. He just got done playing Planet Side 2. Hi, Steve. How are you? Good. Um, what faction did you just play? Uh, I played a uh, uh, new conglomerate. Nice. Oh, that's two new conglomerate. How convenient. Um, what was your favorite thing about playing today? Um, definitely the coordination. You see a lot of uh, teamwork in uh, going for one specific point or pushing, uh, dropping in together in a galaxy or something. Cool. Uh, you told me that you played Planet Side 1. What was your favorite thing about the first planet side? Uh, the galaxy drop. The galaxy drops? I ran with an outfit that we would uh, pack one or two galaxies and uh, all basically drop on the same back door for a base. And just... Awesome, awesome. Well, are you looking forward to playing planet side too? Extremely, extremely. All right, we'll make sure you get your beta key, all right? Thank you very much. That was Steve. We're going to switch back to game screen. Oh, right when he died. My awesome. favorite thing. Yes, <laughs> dead new TR. conglomerate as killed by Maverick, who was having some unfortunate times yesterday. He, let, let's just say he doesn't really live up to his name when it comes to flight skills. No, he was 
Not having a good day. No, it was not going so well for him. That, as you can see, is a rather large aircraft. We'll see if Maverick or whoever this is is actually gutsy enough to jump in. It looks like he's not. That is a galaxy. They're a rather large target. They can be used to spawn. They can also be used to carry an entire squad of troops, which can be dropped from the air on top of any target they choose. That, on the other hand... Looks like he's looking through our customization. So you can pull off your various vehicles, and we'll have more vehicles, you know, as we go on. And um, here you can see that he can customize his weapons and choose what ones he wants. And that's for all of your weapons. Yeah, it applies to every vehicle. It applies to every infantry loadout. You can pick what you feel is best, whether you want a machine gun on the front of your quad bike, whether you want a rocket launcher on the front of your quad bike. It can be done. This is a very basic vehicle. It's very fast, but let's just say it doesn't interact well with landmines. <laughs> no, you will die. No. So you got to watch out for those. But they are actually quite dangerous, especially in packs. You can use these to hunt down tanks if Ooh, you like. If I'd you love to see that, little little hunters. Yeah, you can do it. <laughs> it's it's risky, but They're if you take super so Yeah, you can take down a large target as a pack if you so desire. You just decide. go in, get a good few hits, and then get out. You're gold. He's feeling a little bit too lucky. You're I not going to be hitting any aircraft with this. I don't blame him. The quad bike is nice and fun. It's called the Flash. Ah, savior of the universe. He's gonna run over his friend. Yeah, that's not. Yeah, let's not do that. And oh, yeah, the the bane of the flash is in fact the cactus. <laughs> Something we, we didn't tell anyone that was playing this game. Cactus is horribly horribly overpowered. Needs to be nerfed immediately. And as you can see, he was able to pick from a variety of respawn points. For the purpose of this demonstration, we have a staging area. In the full game, you're going to have access to a lot of different respawn points, depending on what you have captured, depending on what, say, if you have a galaxy deployed somewhere, that can be used as a spawning point. If you have your squad members, you can spawn on them simply by using a drop pod. In this case, this area has just been designed so they can get right back into the fight nice and quickly. Yeah, we tried to make it so that people were only in this one area. Like, you'll actually have a lot more bases to take in a lot question. more area. Yeah. This is just a small demo area where we... We kind of made it so that they can't go anywhere else, but the whole map's there. Let's see if he can fly a Reaver. <laughs> I think he's just trying to, to learn or and get his... Yeah, it can't be dangerous. Uh, needless to say, this is out of bounds is simply for demonstration purposes. Yep. That's what I was mentioning, because he was going off that way, figuring he's going to yep. get to that the point. The flight mechanics are not for demonstration purposes. No. That's something you're going to have to master. All of the aircraft in this game are vertical takeoff and landing. Well, it depends on the vehicle, too. Some vehicles will be a little easier to fly. They might not be as powerful. So, I mean, you'll just have to get used to it. Yeah, it takes quite a bit of practice. And the big thing, too, is different aircrafts for every faction also feel different, as well as their tanks. So, depending on your empire, you're going to have a completely different feel. And that goes for all your weapons, also. Well done, John Kimball. You are doing TL proud. <laughs> He's checking him out, too. It's like, who's this guy that killed me? Yeah, you can do that. The, the kill cam, quote-unquote, is more about giving information about what killed you. It's about giving feedback to you as to what you faced, how you lost, and how you can improve. It's something that's been integrated into a lot of MOBA games lately, for instance. Uh, <laughs> the idea that you want to know... Who is it that killed me? What items does he have? How did he do it? And how can I get better from that? It's not about giving you essentially map hacks to allow you to see where your opponent is. Yeah, the main goal with that is it's a learning tool. We want pay players to be able to check it out, be able to you know, know what I died from and how I can improve right, that. And sometimes it's just even like me. kind of the area in which you died too. You're like, oh, yeah. maybe I shouldn't go that way whenever I'm trying to go into that base, right? Absolutely. So. And informing the players is kind of a big deal when it comes to what Planet Side yeah, 2 offers. Yeah, this is nighttime because I know a few people are commenting in the. Stream. Yeah, it's dark. It's they, dark. Yeah. They don't mess around. This is not. This is just not a blue filter. This is dark. We have flashlights also, and they, people could customize those and add those onto their weapons. But it, apparently, they don't need them because <laughs> no, no one's adding them. They seem to be doing absolutely fine with them at the moment. Yeah. They do help, but. Svanu Troopers doing rather well. Oh no, he's reloading. Is he going to live? Yes. Yeah, could switch out pack. to his Beamer pistol. 
That was very uh, good decision right there. Yeah, that was actually a nice little maneuver there, using the maneuver ability of the light assault class to hop up to the top. Unfortunately, it did make him just a little bit of a target. And you can see right there, you see the horns on the top of the helmet. That's another customization and the camo right there. So we're not only allowing you to customize your weapons, and like we've been talking about earlier, we're also going to allow you to change the color of your camo. And your outfit maybe might want to do that too. Like we have some demo action we show like some of our QA team they're all dressed up the same so I mean we're doing a lot of that kind of stuff also to cater to the community and that's the great thing about Planet Side 2. Planet Side 2 is all about the community it's an MMO so we're building a community versus you know just a little match that you play and you don't re really recognize anybody I think the big thing for Planet Side and old fans and they will definitely agree is that you recognize your enemies you're gonna be like hey that Magret guy is always killing me I'm going to watch out for him. Yeah. You know? But that plays into the whole idea of this faction animosity, which is designed in such a way to build the community, not to fracture it. Trash talk happens. That's the way that it is. But in this case, trash talk actually has a just a little bit more meaning because when you pick your faction, chances are you're going to stick with it. And you automatically hate the other two. And you just you get this this series of experiences, I feel, a series of memories from the game. I always remember what happened with Planet Side 1, and some of the, my best gaming experiences were in that, because of the persistent nature of it. Because I remember these long fights, and these grudges held, outfit and versus like outfit. like, facilities. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, six hours on one facility, because why not? You know, holding out a facility against two factions And the epic you. feeling when you actually do, and you're able to push out to the courtyard, you know, Victory when you were almost getting, you know, completely taken over. So, I mean, that's the feeling that you get whenever you're playing a very strategic game. Man, so many players doing fairly well. This guy actually knows what he's doing with a gun. He likes knifing, too. He does. He hasn't hit anything with it yet, so that's what he's he might want to He's going to hack the terminal. As you can see right now, that's the progression for the hack. He can look around while he's hacking also. He just has to stay in that vicinity. Yep, nice shot there by a new conglomerate heavy assault trooper. See, it's nice and easy just to jump into right there it. on the screen too. We yeah. also have that ability, you know, you can switch your classes out right on the screen before you spawn. Here we go. Now that is a view of the facility from the air. Yeah, He's actually going to cool. hot drop in a max directly on top of his squad mates. Get him right back into the fight. He was fortunate that he wasn't spotted on that high ground position. Now, as you can see that banner right there, that's who owns the base. So there's a bunch of banners throughout the base and you'll be able to... Those things will switch whenever a different empire yes, owns the base. Yes. A Max is an absolute terror indoors. It's yes. a nightmare to deal with. And he's got some pals too, so he's not alone. Yeah. He's not messing around. He's taking quite a lot of fire from that new conglomerate yes, trooper over the side there. Surprisingly, yes. doesn't want to go in. Yeah, I'm surprised he doesn't want to just go in there and yeah, take One-on-one, -on -one, generally speaking, a Max has a significant advantage against a normal soldier in an indoor environment. Although they are large targets, they're difficult to maneuver. You can still kill them with infantry weapons, oh, though. Just, there you go. It is rather difficult to do. And but you cannot hack terminals. No, you cannot no, hack terminals. No, you can't do that. He's like, How Whoa. would you do it? You have no hands. Hello? Yeah, we'll be sure to make sure that they uh, realize that when they go up to that. Account. Definitely worth a mention. You'll notice there in the background a deployable turret. This can be put down by the engineer class with the so-called ace tool. And the shield that you see right in front of there is going to change based on like who owns it. So if yeah. it's a NC engineer that dropped it, it'll be blue. Right. We'll switch on back to the TR perspective. Uh, yes, the Maxis can melee. Someone was asking about that. Yep. That's one of the coolest things. Now this guy isn't mucking around, so customization-wise, I think this guy's picked the ideal set of yeah, weapons for good. here. He's actually on a rampage already. He has a dual cycler on each arm. These things are absolutely massive chain guns. Yeah, they he's a terrorizer. Yeah, you, he he's has got he's Hinko got the right set. Gun? Bear in mind that oh, this and a headshot. Yeah, this seems really powerful. And he just got a heal too, so. But bear this in mind that if you get caught out in the middle of, he say... shot at his friend. Oh, I'm loving it. Yeah, <laughs> he's just indiscriminate. He's just killing everything. So many bullets. In a situation with this, you've got two anti-infantry weapons. You're going to be absolutely worthless against aircraft. You're going to be worthless against vehicles. So, in an indoor position like this, this is where you want to be. 
but once again, you have a large target. You could be hit by rockets very easily. You could be taken out that way. I'd like to also note that you see that engineer that's repairing him right now? Yep. Oh, that was earlier? Basically, we're allowing you to do a lot of uh, teamwork. So a lot of these classes really help each other out. And the engineer is one of our support classes, so he was actually doing the right thing. Spawning a turret, unfortunately taking a rocket for his trouble. Hopefully his team, there you go, his teammates actually got to take control of the turret here, and eventually that max unit for the new conglomerate goes down. And for our team play, we also have squads and platoons, so you can group up your friends really easily and get into the battle. On top of that, we also have voice in-game, so we have a Vivox system, and that allows you to make your own channels, you know, you can pass password protect them if you want, but we're going to have a lot of channels. Right now, they're all chatting with each other, trying to organize stuff, so that's why you're seeing a lot of organized play right now. And this is just people, you know, coming up to the terminal and playing, so... Absolutely. Please note that that is not the only weapon you can have. You can have one different weapon on each arm. The Pounder is used as an anti-vehicle grenade launcher. Yeah, so the big thing with the Max is, is we wanted you to be able to customize both weapons and change them. So you can, you know, have a flamethrower on one side and, you know, a cycler on the other. We want you to be able to customize it and play to your style and liking. Yep. Here's the thing. He's currently a Max unit. You'll notice a really long deployment time for jumping back onto a squad mate. You can't simply keep doing that. You've got to be very careful. And the thing is, you can revive in this game. If you are a medic, you can revive someone on the ground. Squad spawning is not designed to just get you right back into the fight, even if you die. You've got to try and stay alive. You've got to have your teammates actually revive you. Otherwise, a long cooldown begins. So if you can't spawn on your squad, it's okay. There's other places you can go. Yeah, the medics aren't doing their jobs really well. <laughs> They're not, no. That, that's something that people need to learn. It's, it is a skill, without question, you know. And it's, you're vulnerable, too, when you're doing that. Without so, question. You know, you give your tool out, you're heat reviving someone. There's a lot of potential for you to get killed. Yep. So having someone with you also is nice, so they can protect you while you're reviving your teammates. Yeah, you the demonstration of a day to night, uh, night to day, in fact, transition. This is sort of a dawn environment. It's not quite full daytime yet. Yeah. Scythe action. That's, That's what I want to see. Nothing seems colossally overpowered. Over Perhaps yet. we should nerf it. The Vanu do have a Vanu specific aircraft now. It's yeah, called each the Scythe. faction actually does. So if you notice the Reaver and the Mosquito already, those are actually faction specific now. So the Mosquito is the TR vehicle yep. for aircraft, um, and then the Reaver is the NC. Yeah, you might wonder why it suddenly became dark all of a sudden. That, that is because a command was used to turn it back to nighttime because more people want to experience the nighttime combat. So we are able to do that. It is quite different because you don't get that in other games. So I think that's the big thing for the players who are checking it out right now. That is a oh, bonus. Oh yeah, I oh, love here we go. the flamethrower. The flamethrower looks really awesome at night too. It does, it really, really does, and the Vanu Sovereignty Max has a flamethrower, and I believe it's a Quasar on his left hand, but he was taken out there by, and you can see exactly what he was taken out by, a scat can and a Falcon. And it shows by percentage of damage, too. Yeah, so it does. There's a lot of data that we're putting into it, and we're going to continue to make those better and better as we, you know, progress throughout the development. Oh, and so you can see his customization right now, he has a camo on him, his little weapons. Yeah, you can certainly see it there. He's going to join up with the squad. Oh, he's given the ability to automatically spawn and communicate. Now, Max is kind of going at a fairly reasonable pace. Wow, there's just sort of galaxy in flames up to the top there. <laughs> now, at the moment, you can, as a Max unit, go into a vehicle. That, that's something you're considering not allowing in future on in the development, isn't it? Yeah, we're, we're probably not going to let Maxes drive a vehicle. Mm. I mean, it's a little overpowered because then he jumps out of it and he's also in the exactly. huge Max suit. So, yeah. I mean, that's your trade-off for being a Max. Yeah, oh, we would just like to stress, this is currently an Alpha, even if it looks a little shinier than that. So that means that balance decisions, optimization in terms of who can drive in what, that's, that's all subject to change. And you have to remember, this is a free-to-play game. So this is a free-to-play MMO FPS. No, take it back. So. Take it back. number of Vano vehicles made their way inside the facility yes. now, which is currently owned by the new conglomerate. I'm going to bail out of his Mag Rider and then get directly into his Max. And you can use one of these energy elevators either to go up or down. It's, it's a handy way of being able to maneuver around the facility. The facility also has so-called jump pads, yep. which As you can, you can see, see right, right there. there. Yep. Yeah, accessing one of those jump pads. It, it looks like. 
Yeah. So you can actually see right there. Yep, there you go. That'll actually give you a nice view of the base. Also tosses you across to the other side. So let's say there was a column of armor coming into the west of the base on the wall. You want to move your defenses there rapidly. The best way to do that is to use the jump pad. That'll rapidly get you from one side of the facilities to the other. Because the facilities are massive. They are the size of a FPS map. So you can't just get from one side to the other quickly. We've also seen some really skilled play between going back and forth. So we've had some pretty awesome play on top of those towers with people, you know, getting on one and going away and then someone chasing them. So that's there a different, uh, well, there's your galaxy. Uh, hello. Yeah, that's what <laughs> I like to see. You'll even notice there that the the guns themselves have faction-specific sights on them. And this is the scythe UI that, that you that just was the scythe. <laughs> that was the scythe. Scythe is currently one of the most difficult aircraft to fly. It, it essentially really? I think flies. It's the easiest one out of all of them for me. It, it, I always found it difficult. And when I was trying it out, because it, it, it doesn't fly like an aircraft, it flies like a UFO, which yeah, gives I a ridiculous like maneuverability. I think that's, you know, that's a big thing too. Like, even us just playing it, you know, we have our own different styles. So for me, I actually found it to be a lot easier to fly. Here we go. Scythe round two, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. All right, let's see if he can do this. Yeah. And as you can see, the uh, UI is updating. Right there, I'll move this up a little bit so you guys can see it. I'll move it back down. But Bailing yeah. out of the aircraft, generally not the best idea unless you have customized with an ejection seat, which is a customization option for aircraft, which allows you to simply bail out of the aircraft and drop harmlessly to the floor. He didn't have an ejector seat. That didn't go so well for him. Keep an eye on this guy and see if he decides to pick up a different vehicle. Maybe something with less wings. I think he's going to try a flash. Oh dear, Th this this is not going to end well. <laughs> Hopefully he doesn't make it into the rock like everyone else. Let's see how he does. The flash is extremely maneuverable, very fast vehicle. It's also very cheap, at least at it's, the moment anyway. It's These very cheap, yeah. yeah. But it's also very... Uh, fragile too, so uh, you're yes. really, really careful with it. You can explode very fast on this thing. If you've driven, yeah. it was a little bit fortunate there. He manages to dodge a massive there. rocket barrage coming in that general direction. I think it was half a galaxy that just flew itself into the <laughs> facility. And he just popped his uh, ability, so you see this uh, shiny green. It's actually an energy shield, right because really. he's a heavy assault. Yeah. And there you can see in the aim down sights view that the sights do look very different depending on which faction you're playing. Vanu Sovereignty being the most futuristic faction have access to the most futuristic sights, but they still have access to the different kinds of sights that you would want. If you want an ACOG style or red dot or reflex style sight, you can have it. And you also saw that uh, blue camo that he was wearing too, that's another customization. So as you see these people are just also trying out the different customizations, seeing you know what they like. The new conglomerate right there with a nice oh, red. There we go. Was, I wasn't expecting him to actually get that kill. Yeah, he he was he was lucky. We'll, we'll let him off with that. And what you just saw right there was the shield regenerating. So after you've been out of combat for a little while, your shield will actually regenerate. The personal one that you have on. Indeed. That gives you a good view of the size of part of the facility. Gonna try and make his way out of the window here. He some of these windows mind, are but. actually really awesome. Like, uh, I found some good spots. Like that window right there, so good. I use it all the time for my sniping. Oh, hello. Because you can get in a lot of those spaces, and then you can go back Very up on nice. the top of the building too. Yeah, you can see the uh, NC trooper actually helping out his Very friends cool. there to take down a Terran Republic Max that was terrorizing. It takes a lot of bullets to bring down a Max. These things Ooh, are tough, crouch. and if if you attract their attention, horrible things will happen to you. He was actually using two quasars there. Those are anti-infantry weapons, heavy beam rifles. You will not last long in front of one of those. At the moment, you'll notice that the new conglomerate soldier is spawning inside of the facility. The reason that he's doing that is because the new conglomerate have this facility. Yep, that's the forward barracks that we were talking about earlier. Yep. And what you see right there, actually, in his view is... Um a resupply terminal for vehicles. Now he's making his way through to point C here, which is currently owned by the Vanu Sovereignty. The and max. he's found himself a max! That is not where you want to be. He tossed a grenade. Oh, he, he was almost... Oh, he did quite a lot of damage. Almost could have thrown a grenade down. Yeah, that max had taken a lot of battle damage previously. So 
Vanu Sovereignty are doing rather well at the moment. I think we're going to switch back to the Vanu View, see what they have to say for themselves. They really want to take over that base. They really do. They're not going to do it with... There we go. See, you can see a little bit of the customization that this guy has on his weapon also. The desert camo. Different Absolutely. Scope. Sound is rather all encompassing. It gets loud. That's what we like. I'm not entirely convinced by his choice of vehicle here. I think this this might paint a bit of a target on his head. Whoa. That's one way of doing that it, I guess. That works. That was fancy. Yeah, it does it does the job. In Planet Side 1 you couldn't drive vehicles inside of buildings. In Planet Side 2, if you can fit it in, it'll go. actually makes it slightly less risky to use small vehicles like the Flash because you can drive it directly inside the base and then bail off before they get a chance to actually target you. We actually saw someone driving that thing all the way up the last time too. You, yeah, you can actually do that. And some of the best things that I remember about the original Fireside were some of the absurd situations you could get into with vehicles. Fireside 2 promises to be the same. people spotting it all too. Like they can totally spot... Uh, enemies with a Q and allow their other friends to... Yeah, it looks like someone really needs to spot this Vanu. It's becoming a bit of a nightmare. It's in a good position. I'm very surprised that aircraft is still alive. Yeah. Ooh. Now that's a fancy that trick. That was nice, yeah. So this guy's an engineer, so he can deploy turret, AI, or AV turret, or a shield that he puts on very nice. Certainly a handy thing to do to try and bring down that how is it still alive? I am I'm very surprised it hasn't crashed into something. Obviously a skilled pilot over there. He's trying to it chase like it he's down. Doing some, he's just going down and taking a few kills and then getting out of there. Yeah, I, I think I saw his wing fly off in one direction, so it's not long for this world. The engineer has a hell of a lot of flexibility in terms of bringing down either infantry, vehicles, whatever you want. Switch over to a different view. Don't shoot that. That's friendly. That might not be. At the moment, the Ivana are doing a fairly reasonable job of capturing, but looks like the new conglomerate have managed to take back these capture points. Gonna get back up on the this is such a good view, too. Whenever you are looking down, you can see the whole battlefield on us. So galaxy dropship up to the so side there. Generally speaking, you don't use a galaxy to chase down another aircraft, but we're okay with innovative tactics here. Looks <laughs> like someone left their mag rider. That Magrider actually has green headlights. That is also a customization option, by the way. The game is free to play. It is entirely microtransaction driven, and a lot of that is going to be customization for your vehicles, for your troops. Your weapons. Very true. You will, of course, be able to accelerate the speed, much like very uh, many other free to play games, such as League of Legends. You'll be able to accelerate the speed at which you uh, gather experience and points. Yeah, definitely. We're going to allow people to get more experience. We'll have XP boosts. We'll have various boosts for people. But one way or the other, the, the buying power aspect is something that the game is actively trying to avoid. Focusing more on the cosmetic. Yeah, we're definitely trying to keep everything balanced. So a lot of what you're seeing is going to be just variety. So just a lot of choices for you to make in order to customize your characters however you want without giving you you know, that huge power boost. I think that people really value that. In, in a persistent game, making your character unique and not look like everyone else is such a big deal. If you've ever played any other MMO, you can see how people cover things like unique pets, armor sets, cosmetic items. Essentially the same thing. You don't see that so much in FPS, of course, usually because they're not persistent in this regard. But even then, if you've played in, if you've played any of the popular shooters, you'll notice different camos available, Ooh, dog right tags, there. and so on and so forth. 
with the max. Oh, this well, he's managed to get him from behind. That will help. Oh, he's almost down. I thought he was going to get the kill. That was close. Sadly not. I think he was actually killed by his own friend there. That was unfortunate for him. And what we're going to do is take a, a very brief break while we actually swap out. Maggie, it's been a pleasure. We will be able to stream at the same time tomorrow, I believe. Yep. So that you will be seeing more of this. And I'll we'll be joined be very shortly by Adam Clegg. So let's take a couple of minutes, folks, and we will be right back.